I'm David from Levika Photography, and today we are checking out the Samyang Rokinon, whichever one you want to refer to, 45mm f1.8 for Sony FE. Let's get into this. Let's just dive into it. Looking at it on the camera, it's really pretty small. It's actually a little bit smaller than the Sony 55mm f1.8. There's no manual controls, just one electronic focus ring. That's it. This is lens hood. Lens hood pops off. This is not the most stable lens hood. It actually pops off pretty easily. Can be put on backwards to save a little bit of space. Outside of that, really, really simple design. So the Rokinon lens technically is made by Sam Yang. It has a viewing angle of 53 degrees on full frame. And it feels more like the equivalent of like 70 millimeter on APS-C size and it has six elements, actually seven elements and six groups, uh, two spherical lenses and one extra low dispersion element to keep the chromatic aberrations down. Plus it has that freaky weird concave element in the front very similar to the uh, Sony 55mm f1.8 and 35mm f1.8 for APS-C size. So anyway, this thing weighs in at uh, 5.7 ounces, it's 162 grams, and it also has a nine bladed rounded aperture, and there's nothing else to it, that's it. I mean, this thing, it, it auto focuses, the auto focus is quiet, it's silent, uh, but outside of that, this is a very basic, tiny, sharp little lens. So this is the indoor lens flare test. You know, the strange thing about this lens, this is the 45mm Rokinon at f1.8. There's all this digital banding coming from the LEDs. Uh, in normal photo mode, it doesn't actually look like that. Alright, stop it down to f5.6, and yeah, it's typical Rokinon Samyang lens flaring. You know, it. they've never really had great flare control, and you can see, look at that right there. That kind of smearing effect. So it's it's decent, but not great. I switched over to the Sony 55mm Zeiss Sonar TZA, etc. Blah blah blah. This is at 1.8 indoors, and you can see it also has almost the exact same style flaring. So I think this must have something to do with that concave front element. So if I step this down to f5.6, and you'll see that it's actually worse. The starring is way, way more prominent on the Sony 55mm. That's interesting. So let's check this outside. With the sun, it seems to do okay. A little bit of starring, not too bad. There must be a, a chunk of dirt on the lens there. All right, here's the Sony outside with the sun just cresting like in the other shot. And look at that. This is this is worse than the Rokinon. I mean, yeah, a lot worse. This is really surprising. The autofocus of this lens is actually really good. It's controlled by the same STM motor that's in the uh, 35mm 1.4 I reviewed a while back. And because it's a lighter lens, it's actually a little snappier. So it seems to handle just about everything that you throw at it, and it tracks really, really well. I was really surprised by this. But what can I say besides... All right, let's take a look at some of the technical images from this lens. Now, before I do this, I just want to say that this first test, I am stealing from Ted Forbes from The Art of Photography here on YouTube. Uh, Ted kind of came up with this idea to measure a field of curvature, or at least he exposed it, and I'm totally stealing it from you, so thank you, Ted. By the way, um, I love his channel for the Artist Series. Little mini documentaries that are really amazing. He does such a great job on them. Anyway. I'm stealing his test. So let's get back to this. Uh, this is shot at f1.8 and basically 
What this does is it measures the field of curvature, meaning the sharpness across the plane. It doesn't have anything to do with actual barrel distortion or anything like that. It just measures the sharpness plane. So that's what we want to look at is how straight this is. If you take a shot with your camera just above the ground and focus in kind of close to the center of the frame, a little bit more to the foreground, and then you bring the image into Photoshop and then you go to filter, stylize, and find edges, you'll get this. And this actually shows you the physical sharpness plane and this is really really cool. I never even thought about doing this before so you know thank you Ted for showing me this and I'm totally stealing it because it's a great test. Anyway this has a very straight uh, field of curvature even though it does have a little bit of barrel distortion it doesn't show up in here and then this is where it gets really interesting so I shoot primarily in RAW and usually what I do is I shoot in RAW and then I just batch convert to JPEGs to show you guys what we're looking at. Well, the, the thing that's interesting about this is when you do this with this lens is it turns off all of the lens info on the lens. So uh, even though it's turned on on the camera, it doesn't translate through RAW. So what you're getting is just the information from the actual lens with no corrections. Um, doesn't correct for chromatic aberrations or barrel distortion or vignetting. So what you're seeing is basically the lens as its natural self. And this is really pretty impressive. So just to give you an idea, this is f1.8. But what I wanted to show you was that from the center, and look at how sharp that is, to the corner, uh, that is from here to there, that's a little over a stop and a half that's hardly anything. Now the, the Zeiss 55 millimeter is actually almost two and three quarter stops from the center to the corner. So that's really pretty impressive. And the second that you step this down, this is at f 2.2 and you can see that that vignetting is almost completely gone and you have a half a stop discrepancy from the center to the extreme corners and that pretty much holds true all the way through these f-stops. So this one right here is at f5.6, f8. But anyway, just to give you an idea, that's really pretty good for not having any distortion corrections turned on. And I'll show you more of this in a second. Uh, but let's go to these images here. And what we're going to do is compare these images. I just want to give you an idea of what the sharpness is like. I'm not bothering with the resolution charts this time. I just shot a window so you can see what the distortion is like. Now, oddly, you're seeing the XF data here. And F1.8, F2.8, F4, and F5.6. Why is F5.6 so soft? Well, it's because I still had pet eye detection turned on. And sure enough, in this shot is Cody, my cat. So it was trying to focus on Cody. I didn't even pay attention to that when I shot it. So I thought that was kind of funny. Back to what we're looking at. Uh, here in the center, this lens is producing 5,100 lines of resolution at f4. And then by the time you get to the extreme corners, let me go all the way down here, uh, you'll see that over here, it's 3,300 lines of resolution, which is really pretty good. Now at f1.8, at the extreme corners, it's about 2400 lines of resolution. And in the center, it's about 3300, which is still very good. At f2.8, it's closer to the f4. So let me go back to center here. You can see how sharp f2.8 is in the center. Just mind-blowingly good. I can even zoom in a little bit more if you want to really pixel peep, but yeah really just a stupid sharp lens. So this is f8, f16, f22, and f11. So this lens is insanely stupid sharp from f4.5 is where it's sharpest in the center, uh, but f5.6 is where it's sharpest in the extreme corners. So I prefer to shoot everything in f5.6 if you want stupid sharp. But in any case, this lens is really good at f8 and in the center, you can see 
everything is really really good now there is a little bit of diffraction sitting in the corners at f16 but not much it's not noticeable f22 it starts to become noticeable the resolution in the extreme corners drops down to about 2900 lines of resolution the center at f22 is 3300 lines of resolution and then at f16 it's about 38 at f11 it's 44 and at f8 it's right around 4800 again so basically this lens is extremely usable through all f-stops and if you shoot at f22 you just have to sharpen a tad you've got amazingly good images this lens is crazy stupid sharp all the way across the film plane which is what i like it's not the sharpest lens that i've seen at the middle focal length that goes to the sigma art 50 millimeter 1.4 but that's okay for this price point we're talking four hundred dollars retail usually three to three thirty when it's on sale this is a hell of a good lens for that price so the other thing i wanted to show you was my sony 55 millimeter f1.8 i was shooting these consecutively at the same time and i just shot this other wall that was in the front of my house and you can see that the sony um through the lens profiles cleans everything up but this is what I thought was interesting I only saved one from f2.8 because the rest of them look normal but f2.8 there's an issue with this lens and when you zoom in the center's average it's what it's supposed to be but this upper corner has got just this kind of blurry distortion going on and this only happens at f2.8 and it's really weird because it's in that section and it's, I don't know why it's like that, but it's only f2.8. Very unusual. So like I was telling you, this lens at f1.8, and that's what this is right here, is not only really nice and sharp, uh, as you can see from here, the chromatic aberrations are like next to nil. They, they really don't exist until you get into backlight situations. And then you see something. Uh, but in this situation you really don't and this is just a block fence wall outside and it was hit with direct sunlight uh, you can see the vignetting you can see a little bit of barrel distortion but when you shoot with in-camera JPEG this is what you get and it's very clean no distortion hardly any vignetting at f1.8 so if you like to shoot JPEG this is definitely doing its job but it's weird that it doesn't hold any of that lens profile information in RAW. Let's play a little game. Grab a piece of paper and a pen and it's time to make a list. So put down numbers 1 through 13 and then choose Zeiss, Z, or R for Rokinon and write those down as your answer 1 through 13 and then compare those to the key at the end of these 13 images. This is Al, one of our feral cats, and he's an older cat, but I call him Scarface after Al Pacino from Scarface the movie because he's always beat up. The funny thing is, is he loves the camera, so he was modeling for me for several shots. So you can tell I was using pet eye detection, and this works great on the A7R 3 and A7R 4 just so you guys know. But yeah, it was really on point with pretty much all of these. So there's 13 images. This is image number one, Sony or Zeiss. Here's image number two, and again, using that pet eye detection. And just so you know, these are all shot at f1.8. So here he is again. And here he is again. And now here's my sad, dirty Porsche 928, which I needed to wash and wax. I did that, by the way, but this was my reminder photo. Here's the headlight from it. And again, these are both at f1.8. And this is f1.8 as well. And this is shot on the a7R3, by the way. All these are shot on the a7R3. And uh, yeah, it just kind of gives you an idea of what macro looks like on these lenses. This is Halo. He's another little kitten that we're taking care of. Uh, I got a little bit of motion blur on him because the shutter speed was a little slower, but you can see that everything above him was in focus, so he just moved a little. 
another one of our outdoor cats. You know, I feed these cats, but I also get them fixed. You can tell by the clipping on their ear. And we get their shots at the same time. So this has been a very expensive uh, endeavor for me. And it was because a cat ran under our shed and started living there and had these kittens. Look at that little face. And here he is again, slightly overexposed, but I'm going to show you anyway. And these are all in-camera JPEG, by the way. So this is the last shot. So this is 12, and we'll zoom in and take a look at it. And we'll look all around it. Then this is 13, and we'll go in and take a look at it. And we'll look around it. And here are the answers. Okay, so going back to this last shot, the one thing I wanted to talk about was the bokeh on both of these lenses. This is where the Zeiss is slightly better, but not by much, because they're both shitty bokeh when it comes to high contrast situations. So if we look back at this bush, this tree back here that's out of focus, yeah, you can see, you know, it's a lot of circles. It looks like scribbles. This is the Zeiss. This is the Rokinon, and you can see the Rokinon is even harsher. And it doesn't have to do with the change in focal length. That does have to do with the size of these balls. But the harshness of it is just by lens design, and that's because it's backlit, and there's some backlighting come through, coming through there. Areas where it's not backlit, you can see it's still fairly soft and pretty pleasant. Same thing with the Zeiss, still pretty soft and fairly pleasant. Well, there you have it in a nutshell. It's it's actually a very decent lens. I was really surprised by it. Image quality wise, I really do think it's pretty much on par with the Sony 55 millimeter um, f1.8. Uh, bokeh wise, it's a little bit more harsh on this in high contrast backgrounds, but in regular backgrounds, you really can't tell the difference. And it also has the same lens flaring characteristics as the 55 millimeter f1.8 because of this concave front element. So at the end of the day, I actually think it's a pretty decent lens. It's not weather sealed. There's nothing exciting about it. Uh, design is simple, but it is small and light and God, for the price point, like 300 bucks, you really can't go wrong. So anyway, I hope you guys like this review. Give me a thumbs up, leave me a comment, subscribe to my channel for more information like this. And we'll talk to you guys later. See ya.